Sup guys, Hicking here, bringing you a movie review. Technically, it's a show review <laughs> on Resident Evil Infinite Darkness, which is the uh, exclusive anime Netflix series that just came out the other day. And I happened to sit down and watch all four episodes. And yeah, you know, I'm a huge Resident Evil fan, obviously. So I, I do, I do enjoy. Mostly, mostly everything Resident Evil. I did not enjoy the uh, Paul W. S. movies. I mean, Paul W. S. Paul W. S. Anderson movies. I really did not like those. Um, first two were fine, I thought, but the the rest of the sequels were just terrible, in my opinion. Um, some fun ideas and that, but they just they 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 were so far off the mark. It's not even funny. The CGI movies, on the other hand, I did enjoy. I liked. Uh, there was Degeneration, which took place in an airport, and then uh, there was Damnation with Leon and Ada, and then finally we had Resident Evil Vendetta, which everyone uh, surprisingly wasn't a huge fan of. I liked it. I, I thought, I thought, you know, it had it had Leon and Chris finally teaming up after RE6 kind of uh, kind of ruined that. Like, you know, you kind of it kind of promised things that it didn't deliver on, and you know, the villain was pretty fun, and the whole Gun Fu John Wick style fighting was was pretty cool. I thought so. I really don't get the complaints with them. I mean, what were they expecting? Like a, a, horror, a horror movie? Like CGI horror film? Come on. Like, after where the series had gone, it's like, you weren't going to get that. Um, but Infinite Darkness. Oh my god. And before I start, guys, I just want to say, remember to like and subscribe. Now, if you don't mind, I need to let my kitty out. Loki, Loki, Loki. Come on, buddy. Go to freedom. Freedom! And now he's going to scratch the door and be like, Let me in! Let me in! Meow! <laughs> Just, sorry for that. Uh, you know, it's a nice representation of what of things to come. But yeah, Resident Evil Infinite Darkness. Did I like it? Did I hate it? Do I think it's okay? Do I think it's bad? Is it good? Is it worth watching? Honestly, I thought it was crap. <laughs> like, like, straight up. I, I, I honestly thought it was a very, very bad series. Like, first of all, this didn't need to be a series. This was... This was four episodes, and they were all about uh, 29 minutes to 30 minutes long. Like, this could have be basically been... A, it, it was basically a two-hour bloody... I mean, I guess if you cut the credits out, it would have been, what, 20, 27 minutes or something each? Maybe 25? This could have been a movie. They, this Like, like I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a film, and then they were like, oh, it's Netflix, make, make it into a series. Why? Why? Four episodes that are like 20... The, 30 minutes. Why? Why cut it up? Do you mean it was ridiculous? I absolutely did not like it. The first two episodes held some sort of promise. But after that, it's just like, it just goes downhill. The first episode takes place in the White House. All right. Oh, first of all, the time period. Where does this take place? Does it take place after the day, after the events of RE6, before the events of RE7, maybe? No, 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 no. It takes place after RE4. Yeah, RE4. So this is a prequel. Something we really, really didn't need. And does it, does it, you know, is it, is it, does it take place after RE4 or RE Degeneration? Because Degeneration takes place after RE4. So surely this takes place because Leon and uh, Claire reunited that. And then they meet each other here. I mean, is that reference? No, it's not, it's not reference. The events of Degeneration are not referenced. And, I, and I'm assuming it's supposed to take place after those events. Because the way Leon and, and Claire talk, like... Then again, it just feels like they just... I don't know. Like, the whole co the whole continuity is out the freaking window of this movie, basically. Um, like, it, 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 it acts like that movie didn't happen, basically. And if it does take place after that, it's not referenced. Which is very, very bloody weird. So yeah, the, the one, the one, the one like good thing about this film is is that because it takes off place after RE4, you meet Ashley's dad, who's who's still the president at this point, and he trusts Leon very much at this point, and uh, because of him saving his daughter, obviously, and you've got like some uh, U.S. agents, like one U.S. agent who's like, oh yeah, this guy's just like the big fanboy now, you know, like the president's a big fanboy, and Leon just busy did that one thing because he was in the wrong place at the wrong time, blah blah blah, and then this guy just ends up falling in love with Leon after he saves his life and shows how professional and badass he is. So you know that that kind of uh, plot thread goes out the window very quick. Uh, but yeah, the first episode takes place in the White House, zombie attack. President's getting attacked. Leon's protecting him. You get introduced to the uh, three minor characters. Uh, one of them being this hero of this uh, event that happened years ago. Uh, and some uh, Asian, US agent that's involved as well. That has a big part to play. 
Uh, and yeah, it's a pretty interesting sort of cool episode because it's, it's a zombie attack in the White House. I mean, why wouldn't it be cool? And then after that, you know, you've got this whole conspiracy thing going on. You get these flashbacks with this one character called Jason. Uh, and yeah, he, spoiler alert, because it's, it's really not much of a spoiler. He's the main villain of the movie. He's the one doing all of this. Him and the uh, Asian uh, Chinese agent that are doing this uh, because, you know, uh, certain things happened. And it's, yeah, the villain was crap. Like, uh, when it, when usually when it comes to villains, they're either very wacky or very cool. Or just very very lame. I mean, um, the generation had had what Curtis Miller and 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 that British dude who was obviously the bad guy in that movie. It's like, oh look, look at this guy who's dressed all in white and is British and and looks and act sounds like West. It's 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 him. He's the bad guy. Obviously, he's the mastermind. And then you got the other tragic villain character, you know, who's got a sad backstory and that, and he turns into a monster at the end. Blah blah blah. And he, what is it? Damnation had a. Uh, had that uh, secondary main character who's like who you know he 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 goes between being a villain and a hero and the main the main main villain in that was was the what the president uh, that that female president who was badass like she kicked the Leon's ass and had that awesome fight scene with Ada and then and then Resident Evil Vendetta had that cool sort of dude with the red shirt and that who had no obsession with Rebecca like and he had that cool fight that rivalry with her uh, Chris that was cool no, that was pretty cool. The villain here, though, sucks. Like, he sucks. At, at one point in the movie, like, like like you can predict, he turns into a giant monster. And it's very Dragon Ball Z-ish. Like, the way he looks and acts, it's just very Dragon Ball Z-ish. Like, I couldn't believe they actually went into this route. I, I, at one point, I think I texted my friend. I was like, yeah, Resident Evil finally went Dragon Ball Z. And that's what it felt like. He, he turns into this big sort of Goku-like villain, tyrant villain. And he just keeps repeating the same line, shouting, I'm like, fear, I will show you terror and fear. Wah, I'm the bad guy. Wah. It's just like, what the hell is this? And it's so boring. Like, this is Resident Evil. Resident Evil shouldn't be boring. And yet, it's one of the most boring stories I've ever seen in, 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 this, in, this, uh, in this series. Like, it's very political, yes. And there's this whole thing that's involved with America and China. And it tries to be very anti-Chinese. And then at the end, it's like, no, that's not what's going on. You know, you know, and then it tries to give you this message of like, we got to stick together. We got to help these people, these refugees, this country that's been at war, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, get out of here. Like, shut up and get out of here with your political bullshit. Like, it's not the first time Resident Evil has done politics. I think, I think there was a bit of politics in Degeneration and Damnation. But this one, it just tries to go right into it. And it's so boring like it does it it does not do a good job of it but like i said first episode <coughs> <coughs> jesus sorry so like i said first episode white house second episode was basically leon and the traitorous agents at this point he doesn't know they're traitors uh heading to china via submarine and then some, and the virus, the virus somehow leaks on there because of a of a bioweapon or bioweapon rats. It's the, I think it's the first time we've had, we ever had bioweapon rats, which was pretty cool. This was one of the cool fe things about this film. Like it gives us this new sort of uh, bioweapon monster, and it's just a swarm of rats bursting out of bodies and shit and chasing Leon. That was pretty cool, but it ends very quickly. And then you get the big reveal that oh yeah, by the way, these two agents are clearly bad guys. And they kill all the innocent people, and then Leon escapes with them, and is like, "Yo, I, I know you killed those innocent people, blah blah blah. What's your objective here?" And and then uh, you, you keep getting these flashbacks, these flashbacks to what happened in in this thing, until you finally get the whole picture. And like, I don't, I don't even get it. It's like it's 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 your typical like, oh okay, they, they were they were they were developing bioweapons in this country. They were using it as a testing bed. Uh, these soldiers got involved. They got infected. They tried to rescue one guy who ends up being the brother of this one chick. Uh, he got infected. He died. Uh, yeah. Speaking of this one character, yeah, this one character they tried to rescue in the flashbacks. He literally gets his limbs blown off, and he's still alive. He manages to survive for a good few hours somehow. Don't know how. But he should be dead. He should be pretty much dead, but he somehow survives. He gives them these inhibitor injections that they now have to take. And uh, they end up being basically... Basically, because they need these injections 24-7 to stay alive so they don't get fully infected. They have to follow the orders of this one dude, the Secretary of Defense, I think. I think he's the Secretary of, of Defense at this point. And... Yeah, they basically become these lapdogs and they all commit suicide and the main villain is basically, you know, the, the captain, the leader of this group called the Mad Dogs. And after, like, he, he finds one of his one, what, his last men dead, whatever, like, 
he decides to get revenge and the sister tries to get revenge for what happened to her brother. So all this conspiracy bullshit happens and they're trying to get evidence that shows that this dude was behind it, that the, you know, American government was behind it. So it's just like, oh my God, like get out of here. And in the third episode, they go to China, uh, to Shanghai, not, not to the country in RE6. No, that would have been a cool reference, but they don't do that. No, they go, they go literally to Shanghai. You meet the girl's granddad and then he dies in a fight that was caused by the main villain somehow. I don't know how, like he, he got shot and he's dead in the last in episode at the end of episode two but then he's somehow alive and they never explain it it's like how the hell did you survive that oh because he's not human any what and then somehow the dude like this is so confusing like i'm so confused like claire claire's got a whole little backstory and she's completely pointless in, in this movie like she did not need to be in this film she's doing her own little investigation about this thing that happened in that country you know there's a witness who saw the zombies and that and she's like she sees a drawing of it so she's like oh my god uh, there was there was there was a raccoon city sort of like incident here oh my god uh, did, the, did the american government know are they behind it and she's trying to figure it out She's interviewing people. She's trying to get the, to the bottom of it. And then she gets captured by the one dude who's pre, who's basically the bad guy. like he, or, or one of the bad guys. The, the one who's behind it. The mastermind. And somehow he kidnaps Claire and takes her and himself all the way to the secret Chinese underground base. Or is it in America? I don't even know if it's in America anymore. I'm so confused by... I mean, really, like, uh, I, I don't get what's going on because somehow everyone ends up at the same place. Somehow, um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's China. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's China because the president is there, there to deliver some sort of speech where, where he's gonna like, oh yeah, China's behind these hacking attacks, behind this bioweapon attack, blah blah blah. We need to go to war with them, whatever, you know, blah blah blah. And and the and the and the, and the, and the Secretary of Defense is the one behind it trying to. Uh, meddle in the affairs and trying to get the president to go to war with China for some reason because I because I don't I don't know like um and somehow there's a lab on the I don't know like it, it just jumps all over place and it like the the, the 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 pacing of time and the location it just it's just like where the hell are we what's going on here how are these characters here how did Claire end up all the way from from the US coming all the way to China like what the hell like what's going on the time and the speed and then Leon and the Chinese agent end up there at the same time and, and the main villain is there and, and your shit just starts going it's just like it's like oh my god it's so it's so bloody lame it's so rushed it's so stupid like I really did not have fun with this movie and and the main villain Jason whatever his name is it's like oh yeah 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 you know, you know he's got a good reason for doing this uh, you know you, you're supposed to sympathize with him but then he ends up killing his partner and it's like, oh, okay, so why did he do that? Because, and now he's going to go up and then Leon and him have a fight and, and Claire tries to tries to help out before she gets melted by acid or some shit and then she doesn't really do anything. She just, there. it's just, and then at the end, Leon's got the evidence, you know, everyone saves the day and Leon's got the evidence. Claire's like, give me the evidence. I'll go and spill it, you know, and Leon's like, no, I'm, I'm going to keep this evidence. I'm not going to mention that the US government had anything to do with this and, and him and Leon basically sort of, don't aren't friends by the end of this series and it's like it's like what the hell is going on here like what the hell is going on like they they did they destroyed the leon and claire relationship basically they took a giant shit on it by the end of this leon is pretty much a, a government stooge and yeah and it's like and, and claire's just like pissed off at, pissed off at him and that's it they go their separate ways and it's like yeah that's it that's the way the movie ends like the bad guy dies uh they they expose uh they don't even no. They don't even expose it. They just they just tell the president like Leon sends a message and straight up tells the president, uh, tells the guy who didn't like him at first and tells him to tell the president that oh yeah this guy was the one behind it. We we something happens to the secretary of defense. He gets taken. He gets kidnapped and then he gets rescued by Tricell from you know the villains from Resident Evil Five and that's like the tie into like to Resident Evil Five. It's like yeah Tricell helped the secretary of defense and they rescued him. It's like what's that? What's the tie into that? like obviously it's supposed to show that this takes place between re4 and re5 and you know it's supposed to have some sort of tie into that but like other than that that's it like uh, you only get one other reference which is uh, ashley and, and or, her dad's already in this so yeah I, I really did like this movie it was so sorry series it was all over the place i hated it i hated it so much besides those first two episodes the rest was just a boring misery slodge to get through I couldn't connect with any of the characters. Claire is... I don't get why they keep bringing Claire into this. And and, and here's the thing. Right? A lot of people complain like Claire's role is pointless. And, and rightfully so. They're right. But at the same time, it's like... That's all Claire is at this point. Her character was never that big. Like, think about it. Her only reason for existing was so Ori 2 
would have this connection to RE1. And then her character arc was essentially over and done with with Cole Veronica. After that, they they really had nothing more for her to do. You had that one movie they did in Degeneration, which was supposed to explain where she's been and what she's doing, which was, okay, she's part of a you know humanitarian organization called Terror Save. That's it. And after that, they brought him back for one game, which sort of worked because, you know, she was connected to Barry because Chris and Barry used to be friends. So she's connected to family. She's helping the door out. And that was fine. And here it's like, yeah, you, you can't, if you're expecting to see her like pull up action sequences, like, it, it makes no sense because that's not the kind of character Claire is. Yes, yeah, she can do it. She can kick ass, but that's not a character. And yeah, she doesn't kick any ass in this, in this movie. I think there's this one incident where she knocks some dude out and that's it. And then the rest of it, she's basically a damsel in distress and she's trying to do shit. And it's just like, oh. Like, yeah, her character is just so pointless in this, and it's, it's like you could have just brought in anyone else. Like, you could have, you, you could have just brought maybe, maybe they could have brought in Jill and had Leon and Jill meet for the first time before the events of RE Five when she gets taken out or something. Instead, it's just like oh, I don't know. It's so, it's so annoying. And this, this is one of the things I have a problem with this movie. For something that takes place uh, between RE Four and Five. You've, they could have done a better, especially for a movie that starts in the White House of all things, like you could have done a better job of sort of setting up certain events for the rest of the series going forward. I mean, imagine if they introduced Simmons and had him sort of be in the background or introduced the, the concept of the family and revealed that they were the ones secretly manipulating things like ha behind everything. You could have done something like that, but the movie doesn't do it. It doesn't do that. It, it tries to do its own story, its own new thing that has nothing really to do with the rest of the series. And it's just like... Yeah, so so what? Like, because this movie does nothing for the series. It do it doesn't. It 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 gives you. It tells you nothing. We already know that Claire, what Claire is doing at this point in time. We already know what Leon is doing at this point in time. Um, it's so pointless. It's such a pointless uh addition to the Mephos because like at least with Degeneration, it 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 gave you that Leon and Claire reunion. It told you what Claire was doing, etc. You know, it, it gave you this whole, like, oh, yeah, this company made a vaccine for the T-virus. So now there's sort of an explanation why, you know, you know, like, why the T-virus wouldn't come back anymore. Because there is a cure for it, technically speaking. And Degemination sort of used uh, unused ideas from RE5 and did its own political sort of story. And Leon was a badass and it had Ada in there. And they sort of united. And it brought back the liquors. It brought back uh, Mr. Rex. So it's like, it's like a fan service movie. And then Vendetta basically did what RE6 didn't do, which was have Leon and Chris team up and fight inside to side alongside each other. And Rebecca coming back after all these years being away. That was that I felt like that was what the that was what the whole purpose of these movies or CGI stories were supposed to be. To sort of Leon would be the mascot of these CGI feature, features, and then it would have characters that we haven't seen in years sort of coming in and interacting with him. And uh yeah, like, they didn't do that with this one. It's just like, oh, yeah, here's Leon and Claire, and they don't, they don't really interact. They interact, like, twice, three times, I think. Once for a few minutes, a minute or two in the, in the first episode. I think it was the first episode. or Yeah, it was the first episode. And then and then a few minutes towards the very end of the last episode. And that's it. It's like, there you go. Um, monsters, we have zombies. We have the uh, bi uh, zombie rats or whatever. And, and we have, like, uh, the main villain, Tyrant, at the end, who's just basic. Who looks basically like a... Uh, spiked version of Goku repeating the same lines. There's gonna be fear. I will show them fear. Fuck off. Fuck off, Moon. Fuck off, Moon series. Fuck off. I've never been more bored and pissed off watching watching something Resident Evil related. Like, like this is up there as being one of the worst things I've seen. Like, um, it's just boring. It's just so boring and so pointless. It adds nothing to the series. It adds nothing to the games. All it does is 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 basically be a big fuck you to the. It's it is it literally is a big fuck you to the Claire and Leon fans. It's like oh you want Leon and Claire together? Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Fuck you. Oh you want Leon and Claire to be friends? Fuck you. They're not friends. By the end of this, they're not friends at all. Like uh, they're pretty much Claire. Pretty much is like yeah yeah fuck you. Like and it's like it's like why would you do that? Like why can you make a movie showing? Showing Claire introducing Chris to Leon and Leon to Chris for the first time. Why couldn't we get that? Why couldn't we get some sort of movie that has Claire visiting Sherry and seeing what she's doing and then maybe having some sort of a, a, a background thing going on? Why couldn't you do something that introduces Simmons and shows what he's been doing behind the scenes before the events of RE6? Why you could have done anything more interesting than that. You could have you could have given us like a freaking Jill and Claire movie. You could have given us a freaking uh, Chris uh, uh, and Barry teaming up or doing something. You could have done anything. Instead, it's just like Leon here kicking ass, and it's it. That's it. It's like why, why, why? 
like, it's so pointless. Like, Wesker's alive at this point in time as well. Like, you could have brought Wesker back for this, for Christ's sake, and maybe done something with his character, like, or, 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 or made a CGI movie with Jake, for Christ's sake, and him teaming up with Sherry again, or he reunites with Chris and they're sort of helping each other. You could have done anything more than what they did with this. This was just so pointless. It was so bad. And from what I'm hearing, there might be a season two of this. Like, why? What time period are you going to explore? Like, if it's going to be another prequel set between, after, like, straight after season one, between those events, it's pointless. It's pointless. We know what, we know what direction the series goes into. We know, like, the only time periods you really need to explore are the ones, uh, are the ones essentially between RE7 and 8, maybe, and that, like, like, what are you doing? What are you do? Oh my god. I hated this series so much. I'm going to call it a film because that's what it is. Don't be that bullshit. It's a series. It's a movie cut into four parts. That's what it is. I hated this. I hated Infinite Darkness. And I like Vendetta. I like that same kid. I prefer that more than I prefer this. Jesus. This was such a boring slog to get through. Like. It, oh my god. This was so terrible. Like. I'm trying to think of positive things, and besides, besides, I think, I think, I think President Graham was the one decent thing. Like you have that moment where you know he, he's about to go and do the thing that that the Secretary of Defense dude told him to do, and then because he gets that message from Leon that tells him like, oh, he's like, how do you know this is? Who told you this? It's like Leon, Leon told me. It's like ah, okay, I I trust him one hundred percent. He trusts him one hundred percent, and he does the right thing. And it's like cool, awesome, brilliant. That's a cool uh, president. You know, you're a good president. You're a good guy. Well done. But that's it. Like that's like the one thing I liked about it. Everything else was just so like, what is going on here? Like, you have this one cat, and, and, and they're wasted. You got this dude who was supposed to feel simple. He's he's killing innocent people, and now he's killing his partner. Like, Bobby. Okay, he's the bad guy. Okay, yeah, that's done. It's just a mess. It's just a mess in writing and storytelling. Like, it moves way too fast than it needs to. And even when it does move fast, it moves way too slow because of all the political and flashbacks and bullshit. It's like, oh my god, like what? What is? I hate this, guys. I hate this so much. Like, if you want to watch it, give it a bloody go. But, like, don't don't expect it to be this bright, sunny, smart thing. Like, it's really not. And, like, honestly, like, Vendetta was, was, was in terms of action sequences, Vendetta was miles better. Like, holy crap. This was just, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I hated this. Holy crap. Um... Seriously, I need, I need, I need a new Resident Evil game. That will wash out the taste of this one because this was. I want to forget this happened. Like I don't. I don't. I don't consider this canon. I don't. It's such a pointless entry in the series. Like I don't consider this canon to be honest. It's. It's dumb. It's. It's dumber than most Resident Evil stories are. Like this was really bloody dumb. I. Holy crap. It was just wow. Anyway, guys, that's my rant. That's my review rant for this. You know, take it or leave it, as you will. As always, remember to like and subscribe. And I shall see you, and I shall see you. Hopefully the next time uh, we get something Resident Evil related, it, you know, film-wise or feature-wise, it will be better than this pile of crap was. I got high hopes for that movie coming out uh, at the end of this year. I got high hopes. <laughs> or at least I want to have high hopes. Hopefully that's better than this. Hopefully it is better than this. Like, because wow. For the first time, a Resident Evil CGI uh, story to be this flat and boring, like, wow. That's that's an insult. Holy crap. It, it, this made the Paul W. Anderson movies better in comparisons. Holy crap. I can't believe I said that, but it does. It was. It was. The movies were better than this. Wow. Wow, that's shocking. Like, I'm, even, I'm admitting it. Like, wow. But yeah, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, guys, okay? Take care and bye.